So, in the previous video, we basically just went through and created our main joint chain. And that's what you can see here. We created the joints and fixed the orientations. So everything rotates and moves as you would expect it to. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add in, uh, start to build in some of the rig controls. And to start off with, we're going to add in the IKFK sort of blending functionality. And this is quite easy to set up. Um, so, but because this will be, well, basically this process is going to be exactly the same for all the limbs. So rather than me just go through uh, it four times and repeating uh, what I say and do, I'm just going to focus maybe on the left arm and then you can take all those steps and just apply them to the right arm and the legs. We will come back to the spine um, later. So for now, let's just open up the outliner. So let's get rid of everything else. And by get rid of, I mean we're just going to hide. So I'm just going to press Control H and hide that. So we have our base skeleton. And let's say this is going to be the one that's used for driving the geometry. So as this skeleton moves around, um, it will move the vertices and deform your mesh. So let's just refer to this as the bind skeleton for now, just to make things um, a bit clearer. Um, I'm just going to move this down to the bottom of the outliner. So what we need are some more skeletons that are going to drive this one. So I'm going to start off by just duplicating this three times. And I'm going to rename them. Only a slight uh, name change, but this just means that we know exactly what they are and what each joint chain is going to do. So we've got IK, FK, and then we've got a third one called stretch. Now we're not going to use this one just yet, but as we're in here and we're duplicating the joints, it sort of makes sense for us to uh, just add this one in as well. So if I just move them up to make things a little bit clearer. So we now have four um, joint chains, one for the IK, one for the FK. We've got our main sort of bind skeleton and we've got a stretch one. So I'm just going to move all these back down so they're in exactly the same position as the main skeleton. And again, I'm just going to hide the stretch skeleton for now because we're not worried about that. So we need to make the IK shoulder drive the main bind shoulder, but we also need to make the FK shoulder drive it as well. So what we're going to do is select the IK shoulder. Let's just move this down here. Just makes it a little bit clearer to follow if it's underneath. IK. We're going to select the IK shoulder, the FK shoulder, and then the main bind shoulder. And I'm going to go to Constrain Parent and open that up. If I just reset the settings, just in case yours aren't the same, we're going to turn off Maintain Offset. Because what that will do is that will, if they aren't already in the same position, it will leave the other joints in the other positions and you will have an offset added to it. Whereas we want the bind skeleton to follow the IK and the FK skeletons uh, completely. So if I click add, so we can see here this parent constraint node has been added and it's been influenced by the left IK shoulder and the left FK shoulder. So we can just repeat that with the elbow. And I'm just going to press G this time. And as you can see, that adds uh, a parent constraint because that just repeats the last sort of operation and the wrist, IK, FK, left wrist. So it's simple as that. So if I select the FK shoulder, and let's just rotate that, what you can see now is the bind skeleton is always going to be in between the IK and the FK controls because in the parent constraint, these are both set to one because it's being influenced by them both to 
to a value of one. Um, if I sort of turned off the IK, you see it now snaps to where the FK is. So what we're eventually going to do is we're going to create a blend, which is going to blend between these two values, which is going to mean that your bind arm will blend seamlessly between the IK and FK arm. Um, but that's coming later on. So we have our IK and FK arm, um, and it's controlling the bind arm. But now what we need to do is just maybe bring in some controls. Uh, and these are sort of visible icons that the animator can use to move and manipulate and pose the character. Now I've supplied some with the um, files that come with the tutorial, but you could just go in and just create NURBS primitive circle. You know, you could just use something like this. Very standard uh, control. Um, and you could just change the shape you know, just by editing the uh, CV points or something like that. Now, like I said, just to save you some time, I'm just going to bring in some icons that I've already created. Now, these um, these are for all sorts, so they will come in handy later on. Like we've got one for the foot and the spine. So I'm just going to hide them for now because we don't really need them. So. The, this is what we've got. We've got left arm one control, although we don't need the one in that because we've only got the one left arm. And that is going to be like a global control for the left arm. We've got an elbow control, and that's going to be when you're using the IK arm, that will dictate which uh, way the elbow points in. We've got a left arm IK control, and that is just to control the IK. So you'll pull that around and the arm will move with it. We have a root control, and that is going to go at where the shoulder is, and that will act as a way for you to manipulate where the root of the arm's position is. And then we have three FK controls. And they're just going to be, well, obviously for your shoulder, elbow and wrist. So let's just zero them out. Now, before I start positioning these, I'm just going to do one extra step. I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to group all those and rename the group the same name as the control, but with offset after it. Now I'm doing this because ideally what you want with your controls is for the translations and rotations to be zero. So when the animator comes to animate with it, there's no values already on there or inherited from anything else. Um, because if they need to sort of go to the bind pose or something like that, or they need to reset the arm position, they can just zero everything out and they know that's reset. Having these control having these offset groups means that any transformations or rotations that the control would have inherited due to where its position is the the offset groups inherit those those values not the actual control. So now I've done that we need to just go through and position these where they need to be. But we don't we don't just need the position, we need the orientations to be to match the orientations of the arm as well. If you don't match the orientations, then you will get issues where um, the rotational axes are different. So if you rotate X on one control and it doesn't match with the joint, then you will get conflicts and um, Initially, it might look okay, but when you come to do more extreme poses, you'll get it. You'll get uh, issues where the joints start flipping. Um, so having the controls have the exact orientations of the joints that they're driving just eliminates uh, sort of that those issues. So let's just get rid of those. Open the shoulder. So the left arm control. 
and if you see I'm manipulating the offset groups not the controls so this is going to be like I said the global control so we don't need that to be in the position of a joint we're just going to make that float sort of at the end of the arm because that's not going to be visible only when it's IK or only when it's FK it's going to be there all the time um, so let's do the FK controls left wrist FK and I'm just going to go constrain parent elbow press G to repeat that wrist so we've done the wrist we want the shoulder so while we've got the shoulder selected, we could do the left arm root because that's going to go in that position as well. So the wrist, we want the IK control to go there and the elbow, we want the elbow control to go there. Now we're only using the parent constraints just to make sure we've got the exact positions and orientations. So that's set up. Now this icon isn't rotated correctly, so I'm just going to press, hold down J and that will snap as I rotate and then I'm just going to go to freeze transforms now that's just a, a visual thing basically I eventually the control is going to be out the back and I want it to always point at the elbow so that just needed rotating I'm leaving it at the elbow position for now because uh, when we come to a add in the pull vector constraint later on it works better if you leave the control that it's being constrained to on the elbow or the knee um, just because then you don't end up with a slight offset uh, when you're blending between IK and FK. So we have the controls, we have the IK and FK arm connected so that we can blend between them but we can't blend between them just yet. Um, so let's just wire up some of these controls quickly. So I'm going to open up the FK joint chain and I'm just going to do wrist FK, wrist FK, constrain parent, elbow FK, so that's going to drive that joint, shoulder FK is going to drive that joint. So now I can rotate the shoulder but unfortunately it's not working just yet because in order for FK to work the elbow needs to inherit the shoulders rotation and the wrist needs to inherit the elbow rotation so we also need to adjust the um, hierarchy slightly so we've got the elbow uh, the shoulder so we're going to move the elbow under the shoulder control and the wrist under the elbow control so basically they're all going to inherit each other's rotations so now if I rotate the shoulder up that rotates correctly and then I can rotate the elbow and as you can see, you know, we've still got our bind uh, arm floating in between the two joints. But we're going to go come back to that. In fact, let's look at fixing that next before we go in and add in the IK functionality. So let's just close some of these down. We've got our control groups there. So what we need to do first is we need a um, attribute which is going to go onto this um, this global arm control. So I'm just going to go to modify, add attribute, and I'm just going to call it IKFK switch. We want a minimum of zero and a maximum of one. Click add. And there it is, it's appeared there. It doesn't do anything at the moment because we've not wired it up to anything. Um, to wire it up, we're just going to use the node editor. You could use the connection editor, um, but something like this I don't mind. I quite like using the node editor. So I'm just going to open that up. Just move this over here so we can see what we are doing. So what I need in here is obviously the control which is going to drive it. So I'm going to click on this to add the selected nodes to the graph. Now I don't need that curve so I'm just going to minus that to get rid of it. And If I click here, I can open this up and I can see the attribute that I just added. Um, we need the 
bit open up there. We need these parent constraint nodes. So I'm just going to add them in. And then I'm just going to open that up. And let's just move these around so that we can see them all clearly. I'll just make this a bit bigger. So here we can see our shoulder IK and our FK. So they're the weight values. So they're what um, are currently they're set to one. So it's being influenced um, by both. So if I take the IKFK switch attribute and I just drag that into the IK on each, Whatever that is set to is going to set those, um, if I click here, so we can see it's yellow, so we know that's connected to something. So if I select the IKFK switch, if I set it to zero, we can see that that is now set to zero. The problem we've got is if I connect that to FK as well, then that's just going to be the same. It's either going to be zero or one, and they're both going to be the same. So what we need to do is take that value and flip it basically so whatever whatever one value is the other value the other is the opposite value um, and to do that we're going to create a new node and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press tab and start to type in reverse and then it comes up with a list of matching nodes underneath so I'm just going to click reverse and we've got reverse node here we've got an input and an output value so I'm just going to rename this the left arm IKFK reverse. Just again, it's important to keep renaming things as you go, just so you know what nodes are connected to what and what's driving what else. So I'm going to take the IKFK switch value and drag it into input X. And basically what this node will do is whatever value is in input X, it's going to reverse it. So now I can take the output of X because we've only used the input X and I'm just going to drag that into the FK, like so. So now, if we look, IKFK switches on zero, but if I select a parent constraint node, IK is zero, but FK is one. If I set that to one, then it's reversed. IK is on and FK is off. So that's basically just setting up that blend. So if we can see that in action. If I rotate the FK arm up, and we've got our control here, and if I blend between the two, you can see that we've got our bind skeleton here, and that's going, so one is IK, zero is FK. So there we've got our IK, FK blending. So, the next thing to do is to set up the IK functionality. Uh, and that's quite easy uh, to set up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go to skeleton, create IK handle and open the options. We want to make sure if I reset it, it should be the default options, but we want to make sure rotate plane solver is on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the IK arm and I'm just going to select the shoulder and then I'm going to press control and select the wrist and there you see it's created an IK handle for us uh, so I'm just going to rename that again just to keep on top of things left arm IK handle and then I'm going to parent that to the IK control. So as you can see, as I move that around now, the IK handle and the IK arm are all following. So the next step is to make the elbow position follow the elbow control. So if I just reveal selected and find that IK handle again. So I'm gonna select the uh, elbow control 
select the IK handle, control select the IK handle, and I'm just going to go to constrain pole vector. So now if I move that around, as you can see, if I move the elbow control, I can pose where the elbow is. So that's the uh, the IK setup, and I think for now we might just leave that there. We have IK FK functionality. Oh, actually, there's one more thing we can do. As you can see, at the moment, regardless of whether this is IK or FK all the controls are currently visible which is going to be confusing for the animator because if you're working in IK but you can access the FK controls it's not really going to work out but we can just use the nodes that we've already created to adjust the visibility too so we're just going to go back into the node editor now I'm just going to get rid of these constraints because we still need the reverse node So if we remember, IKFK went directly into the IK uh, controls. So if I select that IK control offset and the elbow, if we bring them in, just extend them so that we can get the visibility option. So I'm just going to drag the IKFK switch into visibility, like so. So let's get rid of that just to clear that up. Um, and then we want, we're just going to do the shoulder FK because everything else beneath that will have its visibility dictated by this. But this time we want it to be from the reverse node like we did with the parent constraint. So we put that into there. So now you can see when we're working in IK, just the IK controls are visible. If I blend to FK, just the FK controls are visible, like so. So you can successfully blend between IK and FK, you know, and you've got a you've got that blend functionality in there, and the visibility is affected too. Ah, right, so. Just going to leave this video here and we will pick things up in the next one. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if you have any questions and tell me what future videos you would like to see. And why not say thanks and also earn exclusive rewards with a small donation via my coffee page. As always, remember to like this tutorial and subscribe to my channel and remember to hit that bell icon so you're kept up to date with notifications on future videos and posts. This is Ant CGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.